today as we come to the table. Look at verse 25. He says, for whoever desires to save his own life, that is to live your life for yourself, he'll lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, and that's key, will find it. Not just losing your life for whatever, losing your life for his sake. His point he's making is this, you can gain the whole world, everything you want, maybe you become this, you're the most famous whatever, etc. Okay, great. But if I'm not in that, if you're not doing it because you're serving me, then what good is that when you die? You lose your soul and you lose all the reward and everything you've gained. It means nothing. This is temporary. He said, I want you to focus on the eternal. My reward is forever. There's a saying, whoever dies with the most toys still dies. How true is that? Our society, whether we like to admit it or not, is obsessed with stuff. Now everybody has different stuff they like, but we all like our stuff. Pastor Mark challenges us in today's message to really consider what is that we're living for, the things of this world, or, or are we living for eternity? Well. Thanks for staying with us today as we come to the table, the daily Bible study program of Pastor Mark Kirk of Calvary, Knoxville. When Jesus commanded his disciples to take up their cross and follow him, what he was saying was that we need to give up our life and leave this world behind. Are you willing to do that? Is there anything holding you back from fully surrendering to Jesus? Now, let's join Pastor Mark in the book of Matthew chapter 16 as he continues his message, Take Up Your Cross and Follow. If you commit to the Lord, He will be faithful to give you what you need regardless of what persecution comes your way. But if you don't understand this right now and get prepared for it, if church is just easy, if Christianity is just easy, if there's no real, you're not, it's not worth losing your family, it's not worth losing your friends, it's not worth losing your job over, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. There's going to be a falling away. Where are you going to be? What I want you to do, what I encourage you to do is make up your mind, I will follow you, Lord. And here's the thing, again, by the power of your spirit. We're not going to make Peter's mistake. Lord, you know, I'll do it like we said, though I'll deny you. I'm not going to pretend to do that. I'm not going to pretend to be some kind of super, you know, uh, hero spiritually. No, I'm just like Peter. I would deny. I would run. I would do the same thing. Who am I kidding? But, but I can go to God and say, God, I don't want to run. I don't want to deny. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to fall away. I need you right now to fill me with your spirit. I'm going to commit to follow you, and I need you to give me the strength to follow you. I don't want to fall away and turn away in the last days. More than ever, I want to press in, because if you do, greater is the reward when the Lord comes back. And he's going to declare you in front of all the holy angels. How exciting is that going to be? We're going to hear your name just echoing off the sky and the universe as God proclaims you before the angels. There's a great reward that awaits for those who stand and those who don't turn away. But notice what, again, no way, Lord, this isn't going to happen. Look at this, verse 23. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Again, you're wanting me to take the easy road. Rather than suffer, which God has called me to do, you're wanting me to take the easy road. But the Father has called me to suffer so that others might be forgiven. And again, he recognized this is not Peter speaking. This is the voice of Satan. This is why it is such a strong rebuke. And again, it's interesting to me, Satan is now speaking through Peter. And again, note this. Guys, I never noticed this till this time through. This is the same exact temptation that Satan gave to Jesus in the wilderness when Jesus gave Satan the same rebuke. You remember what happened? It was the third temptation. He said, bow down to me, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. They believed Jesus was going to Jerusalem to inherit, guess what? The kingdoms of the world and what he's saying, Satan is saying once again through Peter, he's saying, you don't need to do that. Do it my way. Go and I'll give you the kings of the world. You don't have to suffer. Don't go to the cross. Don't do this suffering thing. Take the easy road. He said, that is the voice of Satan. 
And Jesus knew it. He said, you're not mindful of the things of God, which God called me to come and God called me to suffer. You're mindful of the things of man and taking the easy road. And again, not that God wants us to always just you know, try to make ourselves walk around and, and suffer all the time. That's not what God's doing. He doesn't want to just torture us. God gives us joy. He's come to give life more abundant. Okay, so there's nothing wrong in enjoying life. What he's saying is there may come times where you have to suffer. And if it's me, if you're doing it for my sake, I want you to be ready. And I want you by the power of the spirit to be able to stand strong. And it's only going to be by the power of the Spirit. Now, guys, this brings up a number of things that you need to think about, that we need to think about. Note this, first of all, Peter went from hearing God's voice and the promise of the keys of the kingdom to hearing Satan's voice and being a mouthpiece for the enemy. Now, how in the world could this happen? I think there's a couple of reasons that this happened. Number one, you know, again, Peter had something that he desired as opposed to what God desired. And that is, Peter wanted so much to take the easy road, to go to Jerusalem, to rule and reign with Christ, that he couldn't even hear the words of God. He couldn't hear the Spirit of God. Satan knew that that's what Peter wanted to hear, so all Satan had to do was tell Peter that, and Peter was ready to go. And see, we can be deceived the same way. And again, this is interesting. Note this. What this shows us is that even a true believer can confuse the voice of God with the voice of Satan and believe with all of our heart that it was God. Wow. Wow. You could stop on that verse. That's a meditator, right? You like taters? That's a meditator. <laughs> Add a little butter and sour cream on that guy and chew on it for a while, right? Why? We don't think of that. Well, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. We do. We do. But the Lord's not the only one talking to us. The enemy's telling us things as well. And what we have to learn to do is discern when is it God's voice and when is the enemy's. What are the ways, what are some of the things that make us miss the voice of God and, and, and hear the voice of Satan thinking that it is God? One is our desires. Peter had a desire and it was so strong he couldn't hear what God was saying, but he could hear the enemy. There may be something that you want so much, you're going to go to prayer to God about. You want it so much, God, I'm going to pray about this. And Lord, I just, you know, this would be it. And Lord, if you'll just speak to me and Satan knows it will ruin your life. And so what does he do? He speaks to you. And you hear that voice and go, that was God, that was God. Don't be so quick. Is there a check in your spirit? Now, here's the second way we know. Well, Mark, that's not enough. How else can we know if we're hearing God's voice as opposed to Satan's? God's word will never contradict God's word. He will always line up with his word. It will always line up with his spirit. It will never contradict that. And if you get a thought in your mind that you realize it's going to contradict the word of God, you realize that is not God. I literally had somebody come to me one day and say, God is telling me to leave my spouse. And I said, is there adultery? Is there something? No, nothing like that's happened, but they're just not, you know, I found somebody I like better, more godly, and, I'm, and God has spoken to me. I was like, that is not God. And, you know, you can say all day, that is God. I know what I heard. No, you heard the voice of Satan because that goes directly against the word of God and what God's word says. Don't just think because there's something that you want so bad that you make yourself hear this voice that you think is God. It may not be God. You better take it to the word. You better take it to prayer, and you better find out, is it something that I want so bad I can't hear what God wants, or is it truly God? And if you're in the word, you're in prayer, and you're seeing God, God will show you. If you have a check in your spirit, just back up and pray some more and wait. I've had Satan tell me things that sometimes I got tricked, and sometimes I realized that was not God's voice, that was the enemy. Now, typically when that happens, there's a check in your spirit. You realize that wasn't the voice of the Lord. But if you want something bad enough like Peter did, you can become blinded. And we need to be aware of that as believers, not to allow ourselves to be blinded and not to have those blinders. To keep it from happening, have the word of God in front of us, know that God never contradicts his word. Um, also know that we will have peace in our spirit. A lot of times people say, you know, Mark, how do I know if I'm supposed to move forward in something or whatever the case might be? Until you have peace in your spirit, don't do anything. God will give you peace, Okay. Where the wisdom of the Lord is, there's peace. He gives peace when it's him. If you don't have peace, you need to pray and wait. Now, here's something else that's so cool about this. I look at this situation, I think, man, here's Peter. He's just been told he's going to be one of the main leaders of the church. I mean, he's the big guy. They all saw it. He said it in front of everybody. Now, suddenly, the Lord says, you know, get behind me, Satan. If it was me and I was there and, you know, getting ready to establish the work of God, this is one of my main guys, I probably would have said, give me back those keys. You're not driving for a long time. I want the keys right now. Give me the keys. All right, I got the keys back. I can't believe you let Satan speak to you like that. I can't believe you do it. What did the Lord do? Listen, the Lord didn't remove him. The Lord didn't take him out of the way. The Lord didn't take the keys back. The Lord let Peter stay right where he was. He stayed in his call. Nothing changed. He just needed to grow and learn with a very harsh lesson. And here's the point. Some of you are thinking today, I've done something so bad. God can't use me again. I've messed up. I can't, and whatever the case might be. 
the gift and calling of God is irrevocable. God's not going to say, one day I've called you to do this, and the next day because you messed up, now you can't do that. No, he didn't take the keys away from you. He just says, now learn from this. Ask forgiveness, make it right, and grow. Move forward, move on in this. This is very encouraging to me because I think if anybody could have had the keys taken away a long time ago, it would have been me. Y'all would have taken my keys away. And there's many times I wonder, God, are you going to take my keys away? And he didn't. You know, I, and I believe, I trust in his grace and his mercy that as long as we're seeking God and trying our best, he knows our weakness. He, he knows, by the way, how many sins have you done that God knew about before you did it? Think about it, guys. Think about it. Again, it was Charles Spurgeon that said, I'm glad that God called me before I was born because he never would have after, if I'd have been, you know, afterwards done that. Why? Because we think somehow now we've really blown. Let me ask you another question. How many of your future sins is God already aware of? Now, that doesn't justify our sin, but does that not give you a little bit of peace? When you mess up really bad, God would go, oh my goodness. Can you believe Mark did that? Angels can believe it. And every one of them would go, it's Mark. <laughs> right? The Lord would say, I'm only kidding. I knew that too. I mean, obviously, I'm, that, those conversations aren't happening. I'm having fun with it. But understand this. God's not going to take away from you what he's given you. Repent. Ask your forgiveness and move forward. And Peter needed to learn this. So hard lesson. I wouldn't want to have the Lord turn to me and say, get behind me, Satan. But that wouldn't be fun. But, he, you, know, you know, he had it. Again, he needed the, the humbling, no doubt. And notice, then Jesus said to his disciples, now it tells us in Mark, it wasn't just his disciples. We get more detail. He called his disciples to him, but he called everybody in the area. There was a crowd around him. It says he called the crowd to himself. So the Lord wanted everybody to hear this. It would be like saying this morning, now God is calling Calvary Chapel to him right now. We saw what happened, how the enemy can deceive even a believer, how we can think sometimes it's God when it's not, how we have to be in tune with the Spirit, all these things. He says, now everybody gather in because I want to teach you to keep that from ever happening in your life. I want you to know how to deal with it. And that's where we take up now in verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, that is us, obviously them, but us too. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now notice this. He's saying, look, you don't want to go and suffer. You need to realize it's a different picture than what you're thinking. You've got to be able to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow. Deny yourself here is in the intensive compound, which means he stressed it. You've got to die to what you want. To deny yourself means, Lord, I'm going to lay aside what I want for my life, and now what do you want for my life? Now, some of you are thinking, especially if you're young, you mean all the things that I have, these dreams and all this God's going to take away? Where do you think you got your desires and dreams? God's not going to take away what he's put in your heart. God loves you. The Bible says God will give you the, the desires of your heart. That is, the things that you're wanting to do, God oftentimes puts them there, you know. And there are people that want to do this and whatever. God, he's not going to say, I'm going to come now if you make this commitment to me and take away everything you enjoy. He created you for, for enjoyment. He says the, the, he came to give life and life more abundantly, not to come and take it away from us. It's Satan that comes to kill, steal, and destroy, Right? So what it means is this, though, get your priorities in order so I can do in your life what I want to do. I'm going to do what I put in your heart. Put me first. Deny yourself. Deny what you want. Deny your own desires. Lay them aside. And next, take up your cross. Literally, it means be willing to go to your death. It's not just dying to other things. It also can literally mean physical death as well. And follow me. And so it's a very serious thing here. He's asking us to choose to allow ourselves to die to this world and the things of it, to follow him and all that goes with that. Again, this is unnatural. It's not natural. We naturally want to live. Let me give you an example of how badly your flesh wants to live. Probably all of us, at least when you were a kid, you had a moment where you were either in the swimming pool or you were at the ocean or you were somewhere and you were under there too long. Maybe a wave tumbled you if you went to Myrtle Beach or whatever and the waves are rough, you know, this kind of thing. And you're underwater. You can't wait to get up and get your breath of air, right? You're struggling to get back to the top of the surface. Why are you struggling so hard to get that breath? Because your flesh is saying, I don't want to die. And so your flesh is going, I got to live. And that's very natural. It's normal. There's nothing wrong in that. But the same thing happens in the spirit realm. When God says, I want you to lay down your dreams and visions, what you want, lay everything aside, and you choose to follow me, just as badly, we start gasping for spiritual breath. I don't know that I can do that. I need to get to the surface. Okay, this thing, I'll be a Christian, but I don't know how much I can commit. <gasps> Whoa, I almost drowned down there in this whole commitment thing. That was scary, right? That's what he's calling us to do. He's saying, stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. I won't drown you. I will fill you. It won't be water that overtakes you. It'll be water that overwhelms you with glory and joy, and I will anoint you for what I've called you to do. But you have to commit to me. 
And so when you feel those feelings fighting against it, even right now, you might be saying, he's probably going to pray in a minute for those who really want to, you know, follow their cross, you know, whatever. They, I don't know that I'm going to do that. Yeah, I probably am going to pray that. But here's also what I'm going to say is if I do pray that, you don't have to pray that. Nobody's going to make you. Jesus doesn't make you do that. Here's what I want to challenge you with. Are you willing to do that? And if you're not willing to do that, I would encourage you to go to the Lord and say, God, I'm not willing to do that, but I want to be willing. Why? It's not natural. But I need the supernatural to now take over so that I can make that commitment. And if you want the supernatural to take over, you need to ask God to do that. And he will do it. And that's when joy and true life comes. And notice that's exactly what the Lord says in the very next line. Look at verse 25. He says, for whoever desires to save his own life, that is to live your life for yourself, he'll lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, and that's key, will find it. Not just losing your life for whatever, losing your life for his sake. His point he's making is this. You can gain the whole world, everything you want. Maybe you become this. You're the most famous whatever, et cetera. Okay, great. But if I'm not in that, if you're not doing it because you're serving me, then what good is that when you die? You lose your soul and you lose all the reward and everything you've gained. It means nothing. This is temporary. He said, I want you to focus on the eternal. My reward is forever. I mean, again, you know, every year we get a little bit older. And it's something, we, you know, we think about middle age, you know, and they, well, what is middle age anymore? I don't, in my mind, when I was younger, I actually think middle age was probably 50, right? You think middle age, 50. But how many people make it to 100, honestly? Middle age is probably more like about 35. And actually, statistically, 35 probably is middle age. So if you're super bummed, then, well, <laughs> you're an old man. I mean, I'm halfway to 118, so I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> the reality is, guys, time's running out. Not a lot of time left. Are we going to get everything we can down here, right? Or are we going to store up for the kingdom? What he wants them to learn is it's not worth it down here. I've got so much reward for you and eternal reward that never runs out. If you follow me, look, he follows it up. He says this, for what profit is it a man if he gains the entire world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So what if you get it all? It makes no difference. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels. In other words, here's your future if you choose to do what I'm asking you to do. And then, I have then underlined, then he will reward each according to his works. He's like, I'm coming back. I'm bringing heaven with me. I'm establishing my kingdom. And for everybody that took up their cross and followed me and left this world behind, I've got great reward. And it's going to be eternally given to you. And it's going to be there in front of all the angels, the Father and everything. And it's yours forever. Which one do you want? Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I know what I want. You know, if that's easy for you to say, Mark, you're older and your best years are behind. You know, it's funny. Somebody came up and you were thinking about it. You, we start out as a kid, right? And then we become older and you become more like a kid the older you get. Remember that song? You, know, you go, head, shoulders, knees, toes. And I'm going, head, shoulders, knees, toes. I'm, everything's hurting, right? You know, it was fun when I was a kid. It's not fun now, right? So, but the reality is, is that what the Lord is saying is this runs out. I've got a brand new body for you. I've got a brand new kingdom for you. I'm going to give you more than you ever dreamed or imagined. You ever some of those thoughts like, Lord, what's it going to be like? Well, there's no ocean in heaven. I'm going to live in the ocean. I love this earth. You think somehow that down here, which is called a shadow, is going to be better than up there? What's surfing going to be like? I don't know. Those of you who like to surf, listen, I'm probably speaking to the California crowd. We don't have much surfing around here. I mean, you know, let's just slip on the ice. That's kind of our surfing. But the reality is, if you think something is fun down here, Listen, guys, that's nothing compared to what's coming in the kingdom. He has so many surprises. The Bible says not only will he give us eternal reward, the Bible says for those who are in Christ, he will reveal himself in greater glory throughout eternity. So what's that going to be like? We're like there for 10 million years going, whoa, God is so amazing, and this is everything just been so amazing. He's like, you like this? Oh, yes, Lord, we love it. We're all, ah, right? Now watch this. Whoa, and here we go again for another 10 million years. And, it, and, he, and the Bible says he's going to keep doing that. Now, I can't even, that can't fathom that. But it makes me excited. I get excited about that. And then I go, well, yeah, but, but, but I mean, down here, I could, I could, you know, maybe if I, you know, I could get famous if I could sing good enough or, you know. What? Are you serious? Well, kind of, you know, it's time to get refocused. It's time to get refocused. What really matters? Now's the time to invest in the kingdom and to give the Lord everything because this is rapidly coming to a close. Well, Mark, you don't know when the Lord's coming back. No, I don't know when the Lord's coming back, but I can tell by the way things are going, I'm going to him pretty soon regardless. And so are you. So the reality is even if the Lord doesn't come back, that's not really a good argument to not be serious about the things of God because we're gonna be going to him pretty soon, right? And we need to be ready. And so he says, guys, I'm gonna give you great reward and then he finishes here in verse 28. Assuredly, I say to you that there are some standing here, he says, that will not taste death 
till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom and in his glory. Isn't this amazing? This is quite the verse. What in the world is the Lord talking about? He says, you know, you're going to, some of you standing right here, you're going to see me coming in my glory. But we just said the Lord's not coming back until the end. We now know he didn't come back then. So what's the Lord saying? Well, the Lord gives the answer in chapter 17. So now you have to come back. See, that's when you put that hook in that jaw. And, anyway, I'm just kidding. We're going to see exactly what the Lord was talking about. And he's going to give the explanation to what he's talking about. Because the reality is this. Look, here's where I leave us with today. Do you want true life? Do you want that true fulfillment in life? It's only found one way. And that is by losing your life here and giving your life to Christ. There's no other way. You have, for his sake, you've got to give it all up. You're never going to be content. You'll never be satisfied. You're never going to have joy and true life until you do that, until I do that, until we do that. It's not going to happen. But here's the other challenge I want to give you as we pray, and that is this. Are you willing to say, Lord, I may not be able to do this in my own strength. I know I can't. But if you give me supernatural power beyond my natural, then I want to take up my cross, the humility, the suffering, all that goes with that. If that happens, if I lose friends, if I lose family, if I lose finances, whatever, I'm willing to lay all that down and to follow you, Lord, for all the reward that's waiting ahead, but I'm going to need your power to do it. And if you say, I can't pray that prayer today, then tell the Lord that. Say, God, I want to be able to pray that prayer, but I can't. God will change your heart if you want him to. But if you can pray that prayer, I think we need to refocus and repray that prayer today because it's easy to make that commitment to the Lord and just live life and we take our life back, don't we? What a great day to say, Lord, I'm going to recommit. I'm going to choose to follow you a brand new and repray that prayer from my heart. And I want, for those of you that want to do that, I want you to join with me in that right now. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you, God, for the work you've done by your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, some right now are looking for life. They don't have life. They want life. And they're looking for life and it's avoided them. They've not been able to find it, Lord. It's because they're looking in the wrong places. And so, Father, I just pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you and they don't yet know what true life is, they've been living for their self and they're empty, that they would hear your voice. And right now, ask, we're challenging them. Do you really want life? Then give your life to me. Lose your life. And if that's you, ask God to forgive you of your sin. Tell him you believe he died for you on the cross and receive him now. You're my Lord. I'm going to follow you. Tell him that from your heart. And you'll be born again. And Lord, I want to pray also for any of us that have made that early on commitment. Lord, we, we knew we have to take our cross and follow you, but we didn't really understand what it meant, Lord. We didn't really know. And maybe now it's really hitting us, the commitment we made and the commitment that you're asking us to make if we're gonna be your disciple. Lord, we wanna be able to do it. Maybe some are honestly right now saying in their heart, Lord, I wanna do this, but I don't know that I can. Give them, Lord, the strength by the power of the Spirit to make that commitment and say that prayer. And for those that have your spirit working in you right now, if God is moving in your heart, you might want to say to the Lord right now, Lord, and we will just, I'll say it. You can pray with me if you want. Lord, I choose right now by the power of your spirit to take up my cross and follow you. And all that means, deny myself, Lord, that I can know you and follow you. God, I'll never be able to do this. We will never be able to do this without your power, but give us the power to do it, even the power to pray it. And so, Father, I thank you for the work of your spirit in our hearts and our lives. And we give you all the glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our time at the table of God's word has come to a close for today. But seize this moment to draw closer to Jesus right now. Will you come and sit at the teacher's feet with us? You know, Matthew was close to Jesus. He actually walked with him, talked with him, ate with him, and traveled with him. And in this verse-by-verse -verse series through the Gospel of Matthew, Pastor Mark is taking us up close and personal with Jesus and the disciples who followed him. And together, we'll see Jesus tell stories, perform miracles, astound the people, and frustrate the religious leaders. We'll witness Jesus dying on the cross, experience the despair and fear the disciples felt that day too, and then we'll see him rise triumphantly from the grave. To listen again or share with a friend today's message, along with many others, can be found at thewaymedia.net. Once again, that's thewaymedia.net. Once you're there, you simply need to click on the Come to the Table tab. Listen, we'd love to pray for you or answer any questions you may have. So reach out to us through the questions and comments link or call us at 865-609-1385. That's 865-609-1385.
please don't hesitate to reach out and make sure you're staying grounded in God's Word by reading the Bible every day. Allow Jesus to grow you as you draw close to Him daily and be willing to go where He's guiding you. Pastor Mark has prepared our next verse-by-verse -verse review of the book of Matthew. So put your bookmark there and make sure to join us here the next time we come to the table. Come to the Table is a radio outreach ministry of Calvary Knoxville.